Okay, today we're talking about the all-arounders, the psychedelics. Uh, this is chapter six. Uh, okay, let me do this. There we go. Okay, we're going to talk about psychedelics today. Psychedelics alter a user's perceptions whereby reason becomes unimportant and intensified sensations create illusions, delusions, and hallucinations. Psychedelic fungi and plants have been used by humans since Neanderthals. Amanita mushrooms have been used in India for 4,000 years. Belladonna has been used since ancient Greece. Marijuana was snorted in ancient uh, China. LSD in the form of rye fungus ergot uh, was consumed in Renaissance Europe. Psychedelics are readily used today in several forms and have waxed and waned in their popularity over the years. And of course, I've been, I'm 70 years old, so I can remember all of, these, uh, all of these things. And not only that, I was in the military and I worked in medicine for 30 years. And one of my jobs when I was in the military was, was testing people for drugs, as much fun as that was. Uh, MDMA, 2.3% uh, of high school seniors used it in 2000. By 2003, MDMA use was down to 1.3%. Rave drugs were real popular. Um, the problem with rave drugs is that they really uh, destroy the uh, your serotonergic uh, cells in your brain, uh, so you have a hard time being happy. Uh, LSD, about 4% of high school seniors used it in 1995. By 2006, not so popular anymore, 0.6% used it. Marijuana, back in 1979, 37.4% of high school seniors used it uh, that year. Uh, by 1992, the, the percentage was down to 11.9%. By 1999, it had more than doubled to 23.9%. Uh, by 2006, the percentage had gone down to 18.3%. With legalization today uh, of marijuana, 23% of uh, high school seniors admit that they use it uh, monthly, and 36% have used it this year. Marijuana is used uh, the most among uh, whites. Uh, marijuana is used the least among blacks. Hispanic use it somewhere between uh, these other two groups. Psychedelics come in five chemical configurations. Indols, uh, phenyl alkalamines, uh, anticholinergics, cannabinoids, and those in a class by themselves. The indols include LSD and psilocybin mushrooms, uh, phenyl alkalamines, uh, peyote, and MDMA, uh, anticholinergics, belladonna, and datura. Now, the cannabinoids, of course, that's marijuana. And then ketamine, PCP, salvia, divinorum, and dextromethorphan are a class unto themselves. The effects of psychedelics is determined by the toxicity of the substance, the amount used, uh, the user's experience with the drugs, the emotional makeup of the user, the mood and the mental state at the time of use, uh, the pre-existing mental illnesses, and the surroundings in which the drug is taken. All of these things are important. Uh, you, you drop acid today and everything goes fine and you drop it next weekend and everybody's kind of depressed at your house. All of a sudden, you have a totally different trip than you did this week. Uh, why? Because of all of these. Uh, the effect of the, uh, of the psychedelic has to do with, uh, with, with all of these different factors. Most hallucinogens stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, which results in a, a rise in pulse and blood pressure, sweating, palpitations, and unfortunately, nausea. Psychedelics interfere with select neurotransmitters. Well, there's a lot of them. Dopamine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, anandamide, glutamate, alpha-cyclosin, but especially serotonin, uh, LSD, and MDMA, uh, Wow, they, they really uh, affect the uh, serotonin in your brain. Psychedelics greatly affect mood because serotonin is amply represented in the limbic system. Stimulation in the reticular formation in the brainstem tends to overload the sensory pathways, making the user acutely aware of all sensations. 
Overstimulation of the visual and auditory centers may cause auditory stimulation to jump to the visual pathway so that music might be seen and sights such as colors may be heard. Uh, this crossover of sensations is referred to as synesthesia, and this is very common with psychedelics. An illusion is an, uh, a mistaken perception of an external stimuli. LSD and most psychedelics cause illusions. A delusion is a mistaken idea or belief that cannot be swayed or reason by reason or other contradictory evidence. LSD and most psychedelics cause delusions. A hallucination is a sensory uh, experience that does not come from external stimuli, but is perceived as coming from an external stimuli. Uh, mescaline, psilocybin, and PCP cause hallucinations. LSD, psilocybin, mushrooms, ibogaine, morning glory seeds, dimethyltryptamine, uh, foxy, AMT, and ay uh, ayahuasca uh, are the indole uh, psychedelics. These substances create mental interaction by inhabiting the serotonin receptor sites, especially the 5-HT2A sites. Uh, this affects sleep, mood, anxiety level, and it can form hallucinations and illusions. LSD, or lysergic acid diethylamide, is also known as sacrament, acid blotter, barrels, orange sunshine, illusion, and window panes. LSD is a semi-synthetic uh, chemical compound found in the air gut fungus, uh, found in some cereal grains, but especially it's found in rye. This substance was first isolated from the air gut fungus in 1938, and it was synthesized. LSD fail is a psychological enhancement substance in psychotherapy and is a treatment for alcoholism. However, there are uh, instances, there are cases where individuals were used LSD and it actually solved, uh, it actually cured their uh, mental illness. Uh, a famous example of that would be Cary Grant. Cary Grant, Cary Grant uh, if you know anything about Cary Grant, very handsome uh, man. He uh, didn't think he was handsome. He didn't think that he was a good actor. Uh, so he was uh, clinically depressed for most of his acting career. Uh, and then in the 1960s, uh, they gave him LSD and it cured him of his chronic uh, depression. It was purchased by the CIA, CIA and experimented with for its use as a truth drug or a mind uh, control drug in a program referred to as MK Ultra, and it failed. It failed miserably. One of the CIA's researchers was Harvard professor Timothy Leary. Uh, Leary discovered its psychedelic properties by accident. He spliced some in his eye, and then it, he then he experimented on purpose. After that, uh, it was Leary who gave LSD to the rest of the world. He decided this is too good to be true. Uh, everybody needs to uh, needs to try this stuff. Uh, so he actually smuggled it out of the Harvard uh, laboratory and started distributing it on the streets. LSD was made illegal in 1966, and it was mainly made illegal uh, because of all the deaths that occurred because of it. LSD doesn't, you can't overdose in LSD. You can drink a whole bucket of it and not, and, uh, not overdose. But uh, what was happening, uh, people were hallucinating, uh, and they were committing suicide, accidental suicide. And this happened enough uh, to the extent that they decided that they would make it illegal. LSD is easily manufactured, though it has mostly come from the San Francisco Bay Area of Northern California. It takes a very small amount of LSD to produce a reaction. Uh, the entire U.S. uses less than 11 pounds of LSD in any given year. The chemical is usually dissolved in alcohol and placed on blotter paper for consumption. Uh, 10 to 50 micrograms are the usual dosage on the blotter paper, and that ain't very much at all. The popularity of LX LSD has waxed and waned. It was popular in the 1960s and 1970s as, as hippie drugs uh, to get in touch. The drug became less popular in the 1980s, but made a comeback as a rave drug or supplement to ecstasy in the 1990s. A drug raid in Kansas virtually took the drug off the street and made it too expensive for ravers to afford in the 1990s. 
Uh, what do I know about this? Well, I grew up in the 60s, and I was in the military in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, so, yeah, I was uh, came in contact with this a lot. Um, I came in contact with this a lot in the emergency room, mostly. Uh, the strange thing was that uh, we could test all other drugs, but we couldn't test for LSD because it's such a tiny amount uh, that you can't uh, find it in the, the person's uh, system. Uh, its popularity, popularity today is with the same rave crowd for people who want to experience a high. LSD is used in such small amounts that it is not normally detected by standard drug testing. You have to look for it specifically. LSD is remarkably, remarkably potent, creating a reaction with 25 one millionth of a gram. Uh, it causes spaciness, decreased perception of time, uh, a mild euphoria. Its effects appear 15 to 60 minutes after ingestion. Uh, the effects peak at two to four hours. The effects last six to eight hours. Uh, user returns to their normal state after 10 to 12 hours. Withdrawal from LSD is more a mental state than a physical dependence. They may experience a downer. And uh, this is all the things that you can overdose on. Heroin is number one. Uh, nutmeg is number two. Detour is number three. Uh, it's tied with GHB and isobutyl uh, nitrite. Uh, dextromethorphan, alcohol, and the rest of these uh, people very rarely uh, uh, overdose on marijuana, LSD, and psilocybin, almost impossible uh, to overdose on those nitrous oxide, of course. <clears throat> so as you can see, alcohol's right here, and, and people do poison themselves with alcohol, but uh, as you can see, uh, these, these drugs are far more dangerous than, uh, than these drugs and marijuana, LSD, and psilocybin, you might as well forget it. You can't you can't ingest that much. LSD effects include a rise in blood pressure and heart rate, a rise in body temperature, dizziness, dilated pupils, sweating, after image light trails known as the trailing phenomena, uh, sensory distortions, seeing sounds, feeling smells, hearing colors, uh, dreaminess, depersonalization altered mood, and impaired concentration and motivation. LSD activates the locus ceruleus, which causes a release of extra amounts of norepinephrine. The extra norepinephrine enhances alertness, causing the illusion of heightened awareness and introspection. LSD trippers often lose their ability to express themselves verbally. Uh, the greatest danger is the impaired reasoning that the individual displays and the loss of judgment. The user can suffer acute anxiety reactions to LSD, known as bad trips. This is especially common for new users who aren't aware of the intensity of the euphoria or the possibility of panic that can be induced by the drug. Uh, causes you to feel depersonalization, uh, acute anxiety, paranoia, fear of loss of control, delusions of persecution, and feelings of grandeur. Suicide by mistake is not uncommon, as I said before, and that's one of the reasons, it's one of the big reasons why they uh, made uh, marijuana, or marijuana, why they made LSD illegal in 1966. LSD can be dangerous for people with pre-existing mental conditions or mental instability. Using LSD can aggravate the already existing conditions, leading to more severe mental disturbances. Use of LSD has also led to experiencing their mental, their mental illnesses at a younger age. LSD can lead to relapse for an individual recovering from a psychotic episode or major depression. Individuals without mental illnesses might be thrown into temporary but prolonged psychotic reactions or severe depression that requires treatment. Some individuals have been known to experience prolonged trips that can be emotionally crippling and last for years. And this is one of the reasons why LSD has waxed and waned in its popularity. Hallucinogen persisting perception disorder, or HPPD, is uh, re-experiencing mental flashbacks of sensations from a previous trip. And this is, very, is relatively common with LSD, not so common with other uh, with other drugs, but with LSD, it's, it's relatively common. It is usually from a bad trip, uh, so it's not like you're you're uh, reliving your uh, your glory of uh, of a good trip. 
usually a bad trip. HPPD can occur months or even years after the last use of, L use of LSD. The flashbacks recreate the original experience and they be can be triggered by stress, by use of another psychoactive substance, or even something as uh, normally positive as exercise. HPPD seems to have a strong hereditary component and results in anxiety and panic. Some people suffer from long-term intermittent or continuous HPPD where their flashbacks occur on a chronic basis. This type of HPPD may resolve itself in five years or per persist indefinitely, uh, resulting in difficulty reading, memory problems, color confusion, halos around objects, visual after images, trails, so you see somebody move and you can see where they've been, as weird as that is, intensified colors, macropsia and micropsia, uh, objects appearing abnormally large or abnormally small, illusions of movement, geometric pseudo-hallucinations, flashes of color, imagined images, and floaters in your eyes. HPPD can uh, be caused by other psychedelics besides LSD, though it is most common with LSD. It can be caused by MDMA, MDA, uh, mescaline, DMT, PCP, marijuana, and psilocybin. Flashbacks occur in from 23 to 64 percent of regular LSD users. We can uh, uh, not cure. We we can control this with uh, with certain drugs. Uh, Zoloft is a, an antidepressant. Clonidine is a, an anti-anxiety drug, and naltrexone blocks the dopamine uh, receptor sites in the brain. LSD does not produce compulsive drug-seeking behavior, thus it is not considered addictive. Tolerance develops rapidly, and some users have reported as many as 500 trips in their lifetime. The dependence is probably psychological instead of physical. There are 75 different varieties of mushrooms that contain the active ingredient psilocybin and psilocin. Most of them grow in Mexico, the United States, uh, South America, Southeast Asia, and to Europe, and they have been used since before recorded history. They were especially important to the Aztec and Toltec re, uh, religions in Mexico and Central America. These uh, substances are still being used among Mazatec, Col, uh, Lacandon, uh, Mayan shamans. Uh, when we were down in Guatemala, it's really kind of interesting. In Guatemala, in Guatemala they have uh, mass on Wednesday nights, and they have mass every Sunday morning. Uh, but uh, if, uh, if, they, if, it's not, if they're not having mass anytime soon, what the shamans will do, they'll set up in front of the, on the uh, uh, steps or the porches of the, uh, of the Catholic cathedrals. And that's where they ply their wares. So when we were down in Guatemala and we saw uh, Lacandon uh, Mayan shamans, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there were, how many of us? 13, I think. There were 13 people on the trip, and one of us, one of the individuals, tried to run away with one of the shamans up into the mountains because <laughs> she wanted to. She wanted to experience this, and of course, uh, we had to grab her and and uh, and make her get on the bus and not uh, and not let her escape. She wanted to. She could still be down there, and, and as it turned out. Uh, uh, we were one of the first groups to go into Guatemala after the revolution. They had been at, they had been in civil war for for uh, eleven to thirteen years, and we were one of the first groups to go in. Uh, the group that came in after us, uh, one uh, three of the individuals were kidnapped. So if if we had had allowed her to to go up into the mountains, uh, she might have been kidnapped. Uh, the chemical structure of psilocybin is very similar to LSD. However, mushrooms uh, vary widely in strength, with some having as much as 10 times the level of psilocybin as weak ones. Fresh mushrooms are more potent than dried ones. Psilocybin is broken down into psilocin in the stomach. Psilocybin is uh, twice as potent as psilocin and crosses the brain-blood barrier more readily. Uh, psychic effects... Uh, begin at dosages of 30 to 60 milligrams. 
The effects last for three to six hours, and the effects are nausea and other physical responses before the psychedelic effects begin, similar to mescaline. Uh, altered states of consciousness, changes in sight, hearing, taste, and touch, visceral effects. There is less dissociation and panic than uh, with LSD. Many of the psychedelic effects are caused by disruption of neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, uh, and norepinephrine is oversensitized, which oversensitizes the senses. Some people try to harvest their own magic mushrooms with the similarity uh, between mushrooms that contain psilocybin and those that are poisonous make picking them way, way too dangerous. As a matter of fact, uh, I experienced, I, no, I didn't experience, I was working in the mer emergency room one night when uh, we had a uh, an individual who, uh, this was in Nebraska, and the guy thought he had found magic mushrooms, and he consumed them. They turned out to be poisonous. Uh, there's nothing we could do for that guy. He uh, he died, but it was pretty ugly, pretty ugly death. Ibogaine uh, comes from the African shrub Tabernanthi iboga. Uh, at uh, low doses, the substance acts as a stimulant. At higher doses, the substance produces a long-acting psychedelic-like catatonic reaction that can last up to two days. Ibogaine is used by the Bwiti uh, tribe of Gabon uh, to um, remain motionless while hunting. These hunters also claim to have ancestral visions while under the drug's spell. This drug has been considered as a treatment for heroin, alcohol, and cocaine addiction as it reduces withdrawal symptoms. However, neurotoxicity has been observed with its uh, use in this capacity, so not so much. Morning glory seeds uh, contain lysergic acid amide, which can be used to make lysergic acid diethylamide. Lysergic acid amide has uh, one-tenth uh, the potency of LSD. Uh, it requires several hundred morning glory seeds uh, to get an effect, and this usually causes a great deal of nausea. To exacerbate this effect, the seeds that are sold commercially are dipped in a toxin that induces vomiting. The effects of morning glory seeds include sensory disturbances and mood changes, nausea and vomiting, drowsiness, headache, and chills. Uh, dimethyltryptamine tryptamine, uh, or DMT was first synthesized in 1931 and is found in several South American trees, vine shrubs, and mushrooms. The psychedelic substance in DMT is similar in structure to psilocin and is usually smoked, snorted, or injected as it is deactivated by stomach acids and uh, causes visual hallucinations, loss of uh, awareness of the individual surroundings. The high only lasts for, from uh, 10 to 60 minutes. A similar response comes from the venom of the Sonoran desert toad, and those toads actually live on the Navajo Reservation, so you guys can find these guys, the desert toads, I mean, not the dimethyltryptamine. 5-methoxy-N or N-diisopropotryptamine, uh, also known as Foxy and alpha-methyltryptamine, are two psychedelic tryptamines. These drugs aren't very popular, but uh, they have been found at raves in Arizona, California, California uh, Florida, and New York. The effects of the tryptamines are similar to other rave drugs, euphoria, empathy, visual and auditory disturbances, formication, itching to the point where you scratch all your skin off, uh, paranoia, emotional distress, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea. Uh, we had a person that uh, took one of the foxy, I think. They, they took some foxy. Anyway, they came in and they had scratched all the skin off their arms, both arms, and they were bleeding like crazy. And they didn't care. It's really kind of, kind of curious. The effects from uh, small doses will last three to six hours, and heavier doses, 12 to 24 hours. Ayahuasca uh, yage is a psychedelic drink made from the bark leaves and vines of the Banistriopsis species of the Amazon jungle. This drink causes intense vomiting and diarrhea before it deposits the drinker in a dreamlike state for about 10 hours. Select tribes of natives in Peru, Brazil, and Ecuador use the drug for divination, 
prophecy, sorcery, and medicinal purposes. Cults have sprung up in Brazil around the use of this substance. The active ingredient is indole alkaloid harmalin. Yeah, so let's go ahead and vomit and have the squirts for, and then we can go into a 10 hour dream state. This group of psychedelics are the phenyl, phenyl alkalamines, uh, phenyl alka, al alkamines uh, are related to adrenaline and amphetamines, though their effects tend to last longer. The best known phenyl alkamine is psychedel uh, psychedelics are the peyotes and the, or mescaline. Mescaline is the active ingredient in the peyote, peyote cactus and the San Pedro cactus. The use of these cacti for religious insights and rituals dates back four to 5,000 years among native tribes of Mexico, Central, and South America. In North America, 50 tribal groups are still using the drug for religious purposes in the, into the 20th century. In 1996, the Supreme Court ruled that peyote usage by Native American Church of North America was protected by the Constitution. Mescaline is found in small gray-green crowns of the peyote cacti cactus. Uh, they can be used uh, dried or fresh. The buttons can either be eaten or boiled in a tea. The mescaline is bitter and nauseating and may take as many as seven to eight buttons to elicit a response. The effects last up to 12 hours and results in colorful visions and hallucinations. MDA, MDA and MDMA, uh, MDMA is ecstasy, uh, Both actually both of these are known as uh, rave drugs. They were synthesized in, uh, they were first synthesized in 1910. Uh, these drugs have a similar chemical structure to mescaline. These drugs produce the effects, feelings of well-being, euphoria, and psychedelic stimulatory effects. MDA, MDA was popular as the love drug in the 1960s, 1970s, as it was supposed to increase uh, the individual's sexual desire or libido. It was later found to destroy serotonin-producing neurons in the brain, and along with a few overdose deaths, made it less popular. As you can imagine, people dying makes it less popular. MDMA or ecstasy was developed to produce the same effects as MDA, but with fewer side effects. MDMA lasts for four to six hours compared to the 10 to 12 hours for MDA. It is popular as a rave drug as it is reputed to make the individual dance and interact with other people at a party. The drug was tested for the psychological impact by the U.S. Army in the 1950s, but instead was touted as a drug that would help therapists tap into the emotions and memories of repressed patients. It was... It was used in this capacity in the late 70s and early 80s. The drug was found to create empathy in the users. Street vendors changed the emotion empathy <laughs> to ecstasy to improve sales. <laughs> People taking MDMA experience intensified uh, senses of smell, which makes the use of strong smelling substances like Vicks, like Vicks inhalers and Tiger Balm uh, popular at raves. Glow sticks are waved in front of ecstasy users to create a mesmerizing effect. MDMA tablets uh, cost pirate uh, manufacturers from 50 uh, cents to $2 uh, to make, but they sell for as much as $10 to $70, depending on the market. The DEA reports that 30 to 50% of MDMA sold isn't MDMA at all. It's usually histamine. The effects of MDMA are uh, antihistamines, I'm sorry. Uh, the effects of MDMA are similar to amphetamines that begin to appear about 30 minutes after ingestion, increased heart rate and respiration, excess energy, fainting, sweating, chills, hyperactivity, tightening of muscles, especially jaw muscles, and clenching of the teeth. Baby pacifiers and lollipops are often used to prevent, prevent tooth damage because they tighten their muscles and they actually will crack their teeth. Infrequent use leads to the heightened responses. Heavier use leads to rapid tolerance. Overuse of MDMA may result in dehydration that may result in water toxicity and electrolyte imbalance, uh, pupil dilation, blurred vision, and eyelid twitching, headaches, agitation, nausea, and anorexia, uh, serotonergic uh, axon apoptosis, uh, resulting in thought and memory impairment, 
rapid and potentially dangerous heart rhythm problems, seizure activity, stroke, cardiovascular failure, and coma, malignant hyperthermia that can result in muscle damage, renal failure, and even blood coagulation. Hyperthermia, that's, you're way too hot. Uh, so the raves that they have in Europe, what they'll do is they'll rent a, uh, they'll, re they'll rent a refrigerated building and they will turn the air conditioning up uh, full blast. And then they will have the techno music and people will come in and they will rave and uh, they, they'll keep the temperature in the 40s to 50s to keep these people from, uh, from uh, dying because of their hyperthermia. They're too hot. Uh, there will be lots of people walking around trying to give people water <clears throat> uh, because they dehydrate. They salivate so much. Uh, and if you've ever seen anybody walking around, maybe you've seen this on television, but if you've seen somebody on television with a pacifier hanging from their neck, it's because they're they're trying to say that they are using MDMA. Uh, you know, most people don't walk don't walk around with a pacifier around their neck. Anyway, that's what the pacifier means. Twenty to sixty minutes after ingesting MDMA and lasting for three to four more hours, the drug changes the feelings of the user, feelings of happiness, clarity, peace, pleasure, altered sensory perceptions without depersonalization or detachment from the environment. Non-sexual empathy for others, self-awareness, heightened self-esteem, open-mindedness, acceptance, and intimacy. Now remember, this started, <laughs> the dr drug started out as empathy, not ecstasy. And uh, they just changed the name. So one thing doesn't really have anything to do with the other. So this doesn't make you want to have sex with everybody. It just doesn't work that way. MDMA's uh, psychic effects are probably produced by its overstimulation of the serotonergic producing neurons in the brain. MDMA, MDMA forces the discharge of the reservoir of serotonin into the synaptic clefts. If more MDMA is taken when the, the effects begin to wear off, the, the response is reduced reaction. Serotonin receptors may retreat into their cell membranes to avoid damage. This is known as downregulation. It may take up to a week to regenerate enough serotonin to produce the same effects. Okay, so you got a really good night. Uh, you feel really, really good. Uh, you want to hug everybody. Uh, but you have just uh, uh, created a situation where your uh, serotonin receptor sites have downregulated. Now for the next week, you're going to be, guess what, depressed <laughs> because you don't have enough serotonin receptor sites. After use, uh, MDMA users may experience extreme depression and suicidal thoughts. Because of the downregulation of serotonin receptors, tolerance to the drug is fairly rapid, so you don't have the same effects. Because of the questionable content of tablets uh, said to be uh, MDMA, polydrug use is common. LSD is taken with MDMA to increase the time the MDMA effects last. This is known as candy flipping, flip-flopping, X and L's, and candy snaps. MDMA with hydrocodone, oxycontin, codeine, her or heroin can enhance the euphoric f uh, feelings of both drugs. GHB with MDMA, a form of modern-day speedballing. Uh, GHB, remember, is the date rape drug, so there you go. Nitrous oxide and MDMA intensifies the inhalant rush. Prozac and MDMA are used together to buffer the serotonergic cells from toxicity. MDMA is taken with Viagra uh, together to, uh, to enhance sexuality and is referred to as sextasy. Now remember, uh, most people who are on MDMA aren't, aren't it's not Spanish fly. It doesn't, it doesn't make you... Uh, have to have sex, uh, but if you take it with Viagra, if the male takes it with Viagra anyway, uh, it makes it more likely that he'll be able to have sex. If he takes MDMA, <clears throat> the probability, remember, it increases your serotonin level, and your serotonin level regulates your testosterone level in your hypothalamus. The testosterone level in your hypothalamus creates your sex drive. So if you're increasing your serotonin, which controls your testosterone, you don't have a sex drive. 
So if you take Viagra, at least you can have sex, if you're a male anyway. MDMA has been maintained because of its popularity with people who attend raves, dance parties, and electronic dance clubs. Rave and club music is also known as techno and maintains a trance-like beat that may be accompanied by light shows and laser light effects. These events are usually accompanied with the use of many illegal drugs that include MDMA, nitrous oxide, GHB or GBL, dextromethorphan, ketamine, PCP, Nexus, and any street drugs other than alcohol. Problems at raves usually come from other drug use, alcohol, methamphetamine, LSD, uh, GHB, and ketamine. MDMA effects that can cause problems are usually in the form of overheating, falling injuries, passing out, bad psychedelic experiences, and mental destabilization. Two drugs that are popular at rave drugs, as rave drugs in the Netherlands are 2CT7 and 2CT2, also known as Blue Mystic, Trips, Tripstasy, 7th Heaven, 7-Up, Lucky 7, and Beautiful. These drugs are psych, uh, psychostimulants and cause the following effects. Induced delirium, heightened sensitivity, increased awareness, nausea and vomiting, dangerous cardiovascular responses. Nexus is the trade name for 2CB or 4-bromo-2-5-dimethoxyphenolthalamine. Uh, it creates mild simulation at low doses and intense psychedelic experiences at high doses. This is an amphetamine-like chemical. SDP is a street name for 2,5-D-methoxy-4-methyl-amphetamine and is also known as DOM, serenity, tranquility, and peace. It is similar to MDA as it produces a 12-hour intoxication that results in intense stimulation, mild psychedelic reactions. It is notorious for producing bad trips, STP. PMA or 4MA is the street name for paramethoxyamphetamine. Its uh, stimulant effects only last an hour and leaves the user with a sudden rise in blood pressure, distinct after images, pins and needles tingly feeling like a chill or a person's hair standing on end, seizures, hyperthermia, coagulation of blood, and muscle damage. Bromo dragonfly is also known as bee fly or fly. It is a powerful hallucinogen that has a longer duration than any other hallucinogen, sometimes lasting for days. It produces hallucinations, delusions, and memory loss, and is not com very common in the United States. Belladonna is a small plant found throughout the world that has been used for eons by women wanting to make their eyes more striking. It dilates your pupils. Uh, okay, so a woman meets a man and she's sexually attracted to him. What happens? Her, her pupils will dilate. So what these l women are doing, they are dilating their pupils, and then they're walking around and men think that they're sexually attracted to them. And it makes the men see them as more beautiful. Belladonna is Italian for beautiful woman, of course. Belladonna blocks acetylcholine receptors in the central nervous system to produce delirium, inability to focus your eyes, tachycardia, intense thirst, hyperthermia to the point of death, hallucinations, separation from reality, sleep for up to 48 hours, probably not the best idea, taking belladonna. Here's something that we have in the United States. It's all over the place. Jimson weed is a psychedelic plant found throughout the United States where its seeds are eaten, brewed in tea, or leaves are made into cigarettes and uh, is also known as thorn apple, angel's trumpet, Jamestown weed, uh, mad apple, moonflower, stink weed. I already showed you a picture of this stuff. Uh, the substance produces uh, the following effects. Jerky movements, tachycardia, hypotension, hallucinations of snakes, spiders, and lizards. So I guess if you like snakes, spiders, and lizards, that uh, then you should take Jimson weed, I guess. Ketamine is an anesthetic used uh, with both humans and animals and is a close chemical relative to PCP, though ketamine is shorter lived than PCP. Ketamine was the most widely used anesthetic during the Vietnam War. 
It was liked because it does not affect the patient's breathing, but has the additional side effects of dissociation, feeling like you are outside yourself. Now, one of the reasons we used it in Vietnam was because um, one of the problems that you have when you do surgery on somebody is then you have to wait for them to, to wake up. So you have to put them in recovery. Uh, because they use ketamine, they were able to, people were able to come out of uh, recovery much, much faster. And of course, then they could just, you know, they could get the, the people in and out of the, uh, out of the tents uh, fa faster. I'm not saying they'd send them back out to the line. What they would do, they would do the surgery. Uh, they would send them into recovery. Uh, after about five or 10 minutes, they would be, they would be uh, uh, recovered and you, you would send them to the ward. Uh, that way, uh, especially if there were a lot of wounded, uh, the recovery room would fill up because, you know, with normal, with morphine and, and what else? Were, uh, not fentanyl. What were we using? Uh, any other drugs um, that you use as an anesthetic, it can take 30, to, to 30 minutes to an hour for somebody to wake up. So, of course, the faster you can get them out of recovery, the better it is. Uh, the faster you can get them out of recovery, the more, the less likely that they'll have a negative reaction. A lot of times, they uh, their blood pressure goes down so low that uh, you've got to treat them in in recovery. So you got to keep a, a real close eye on them. With ketamine, you didn't have to do that so much. The liquid is uh, so we're talking about uh, ketamine. Ketamine comes as a liquid. Uh, it's crystallized, and the crystals are smoked in a pipe or snorted to the effects of uh, mild dreamlike intoxication, sens sensation or mind-body separation, dizziness, free-floating giddiness, uh, slurred speech, impaired muscular coordination. Now, who comes up with this stuff? Why in the world would anybody even think of doing that? <laughs> Heavy doses of ketamine produce the psychedelic uh, experiences known as being in a K-hole, uh, where the individual feels as if they are having an out-of-body, near-death experience of depersonalization, hallucination, delirium, bizarre mystic experiences. They can feel no pain, respiratory depression, increased heart rate and blood pressure, combative or belligerent behavior, convulsions, and rarely coma. Now, the big deal, the deal was that uh, once you send them out, once you got them out of recovery, that you really didn't care what happened to them on the ward. Uh, but a lot of times it would take them, you know, a couple, uh, a couple hours before they were they were feeling depersonalized. They felt like they were outside themselves, so sometimes that was a problem. But not usually. I mean, usually they were asleep anyway. Phenocyclidine hydrochloride, or PCP, was developed in the 1950s as a general anesthetic for humans. Unfortunately, the drug had toxic and hallucinogenic uh, side effects, and it was relegated. Uh, to the use with animals only. It is also known as angel dust, peeps, KJ, Sherman's, or ozone. It is sometimes sprinkled on marijuana and smoked in a joint. It can be smoked, snorted, swallowed, or injected. PCP seems to disconnect sensory messages sent to the, the central nervous system. Dissolving inhibitions, it deadens your pain, strange feeling of mind-body separation. Forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating, aggressive and violent behavior, extremely aggressive and violent behavior, depersonalization. Now remember, uh, it separates the, the person from their central nervous system. So if you hit somebody and hurt them, if you shoot them in, the, in a place that doesn't kill them, uh, they won't feel it. They don't feel it at all, and they'll just keep coming. This is the stuff that they thought that Rodney King was on. Uh, anytime they beat somebody to death, uh, usually they say they thought they were on PCP uh, because this uh, stuff um, makes you not feel anything. You just about have to kill them in order to stop them. And they are extremely aggressive and violent. 40% report hallucinations, tactile, visual, or auditory. Damage can be done by the individual to themselves by overstressing muscles, sinews, and flesh. They will rip muscles away from bone. Low doses of PCP produce mild depression and then stimulation and last for one to two hours. Moderate doses of PCP produce an intense sensory de deprived state and last for four to six hours. Heavy doses of PCP produce catatonia, co uh, coma, 
convulsions, and kidney failure, and can last for up to 48 hours. The general drug-using population does not routinely use PCP because of the high frequency of bad trips. Anterograde and retrograde amnesia is common with the use of PCP. So you don't remember what you did. <laughs> I don't know. Why in the world would anybody take this stuff? <laughs> Salvia divinorum is a member of the mint family and produces psychedelic effects when ingested. It creates dreamlike hallucinations, occasional delirium, and out-of-body sensations. When smoked, the effects last for only 7 to 10 minutes. The key ingredient is salvorin. Uh, at present, the drug is legal but under review for scheduling. Amanita mushrooms have been used uh, for rituals as far back as Neanderthal man. The mushroom causes dreamy intoxication, hallucinations, delirious excitement, physical toxic effects that can be deadly. Uh, the effects uh, start 30 minutes after ingestion and last for 48 hours, four to eight hours. Active ingredients resemble the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. Too much of the mushroom will make the user sick as if they have food poisoning. Dextromethorphan is the active ingredient in many cough syrups, including Robitussin, uh, Robitussin DM, Coracidin, and Romilar. 10 to 15 times the recommended dose can give the user, why, why in the world would you take 10 to 15 times the recommended dose? Well, there's what, five doses in each bottle, so that's just three bottles of Robitussin Coracid and Romilar, uh, two, to, two to three bottles of, of, uh, of cough syrup. It causes euphoria, mind-body separation, auditory and visual hallucinations, loss of coordination, dilated pupils, decreased orgasm, nausea and upset stomach, itching, itching rashes, fever, tachycardia, acute anxiety, and panic reactions. Nutmeg and mace come from the nutmeg tree. <laughs> they make mace from nutmeg. In heavy doses, they can cause mild floating sensations to full-blown delirium. Such heavy doses uh, do have their price, a bad hangover and severely upset stomach. This combination is rarely used outside of prisons where other psychedelics are unavailable. And if you remember, nutmeg was the number two killer uh, Number two, th uh, easier, easiest way to overdose after heroin. Marijuana, cannabis, or hemp plants are used to make powerfully strong fibers for rope. Uh, the seeds are edible. The oil can be used as fuel or lubricant, uh, and it is also used as medicinal substances, usually CBD oil. Uh, it is illegal in most countries around the world, even today. Cannabis is a plant that was developed in China, and spread throughout the world for its medicinal properties and powerful fibers. Cannabis appears in writing from ancient China and India. In India, it appears in the Vedas as a divine nectar, and the Vedas is one of the holy writings of the Hindus. Cannabis in the form of hemp was brought to the United States before the revolution uh, to grow for the ships of the Royal Navy. George Washington worked to expand his holdings to grow more and more hemp for for profit. Uh, hemp wasn't used for its psychoactive effects until after World War I, when migrant workers from Mexico introduced smoking the wacky weed to other poor immigrant minority groups. Uh, the psychoactive properties of marijuana became popular during Prohibition when the still legal pot was smoked for its psychoactive effects by those who sought a new high. In 1937, marijuana was declared illegal. Hemp was legally grown during World War II and the government even experimented with cannabis extracts to produce a truth serum. Hemp is legally grown in France. It didn't work, by the way. Uh, hemp is legally grown in France, Italy, uh, the Yugoslavian countries, uh, England and Canada to make paper, textiles, and rope. Marijuana is legally used in the Netherlands in coffee shops. 160 million uh, people worldwide use some form of marijuana. Going into the 1960s, only 2% of people uh, in the United States had tried an illegal drug. This is a point of fact. It wasn't until 
the civil rights movement and the anti-war movement in the 1960s, that marijuana became popular even a little bit. In 1979, 68 million Americans had tried marijuana and 23 million Americans used it on a monthly basis. Attempted control of the substance waxed and waned over the years, but a resurgence of marijuana prohibition in the 1990s led to a market drop in its usage. By 1992, just over 7 million people reported using marijuana on a monthly basis. By 2005, the number, number of monthly marijuana users had doubled. In 2005, 3,200,000 people used marijuana on a daily basis. And this is one of the reasons why it was legalized in select states around the uh, United States. Every year, 80,000 emergency room visits occur because of marijuana usage. This has actually gone up since its legalization. 44% of male adult arrestees test positive for marijuana. 32% of female adult arrestees test positive for marijuana. 57% uh, of juvenile uh, male arrestees test positive for marijuana. 32% of juvenile female arrestees test positive for marijuana. These people are not being arrested because they're smoking pot. They are just testing positive for marijuana. They are committing a crime while they're stoned. Uh, and that may be one of the reasons why they're committing a crime. The plant grown to make fiber is low in psychoactive substances and is referred to as hemp. I was watching a, a news program on uh, the Albuquerque television. And, uh, of course, uh, marijuana is illegal in New Mexico. Uh, they had a, a uh, shipment a semi was found with uh, marijuana on board. Uh, they said it was hemp. Uh, they tested it for THC, and the THC level is way too high for it to be hemp. So they were trying to move a whole semi load of marijuana of of uh, an illegal sub of an illegal substance. The plants grown to produce psychoactive resins are referred to as marijuana and are low in fiber structure. Street names for marijuana include Pot, Muggles, 420, Mary Jane, Griffa, Bud, Herb, Chronic, and Dank, Grass, Leaf, Ganja, Charis, Sense, Weed, Dope, Dubage, and Dekine. Uh, different forms of, of marijuana, uh, African Black, Panama, Panama Red, Acapulco Gold, Maui Waui, Humboldt Green, uh, BC Bud, the BC stands for British Columbia, and Buddha Thai. Uh, and of course, lots of different names. I looked up to find out why 420 has anything to do with marijuana. Uh, the answer is real weird. Um, there was a group of guys that were going out to look for a marijuana field uh, in uh, over in Humboldt County in, in California. And they <laughs> decided that they would meet after school at 4, 420 in the afternoon to look for this marijuana field. They never found the marijuana field, but that's where 420 comes from, as dumb as that is. Marijuana comes in three distinct species, but hundreds of different hybrids. Cannabis sativa is the most common species. Uh, it's grown in tropical, subtropical, and temperate regions. It grows five to 20 feet tall, and the damn stuff grows in my uh, fence row, and I have to pull it out every year. It's not, it's not, uh, it doesn't have THC in it, it's, uh, it's uh, the hemp stuff. Uh, it's called ditch weed in uh, the Midwest because it... Uh, uh, during World War II, they, were trans they transported uh, hemp to make rope for the military, and they transported it in on the railroad. And so it, uh, as it's bouncing along, the seeds are bouncing out, and they're getting in the ditch uh, beside, the, uh, beside the railroad. Uh, eventually, it's a weed, and it grows, and the seeds blow. Anyway, it's it's in the ditches of Nebraska and Iowa and Kansas. It's all over the place. It's a weed, but it's the hemp. It's not it's not marijuana. Anyway, okay. Uh, it grows 5 to 20 feet tall. A plant grows from 1 to 5 pounds of buds and smokable leaves. Not the hemp plants, of course. Uh, cannabis uh, indica uh, grows in Southeast Asia. It's shorter and bushier plant and is generally stronger smelling. It is usually grown to make uh, produce hashish 
Uh, Cannabis ruderalis is a thin, small plant and has very little THC and isn't really used for anything. Most marijuana is grown using the Sensimia growing system where male and female plants are separated before pollination can occur. By removing the plants before pollination uh, can take place, the plants produce no seeds and the THC is stronger. Uh, this method is used with both the cannabis sativa and indica plants. Um, I went over to visit uh, Marius Begay. Mar Marius lives in Snowflake. Right outside of Snowflake is a huge field uh, of marijuana uh, being grown for some purpose, uh, medicinal pur purposes, I think. Anyway, uh, it's really kind of weird because they have growing lights on this huge field. Um, it's owned by the <laughs> Mormon Church, as weird as that is. Dried marijuana leaves, buds, and flowers are crushed and rolled into cigarettes known as joints or blunts. Uh, if it's large enough, uh, marijuana can be smoked in pipes. In India, marijuana is divided into three different strengths, deepening, uh, depending I'm sorry, on the part of the plant that is smoked. Bong has the uh, lowest potency and uses the stems and leaves. Ganja is stronger and is from stronger leaves and flowering tops. Charis is the concentrated resin and is most potent. Depending on the region of the country, only 10 to 50 percent of marijuana consumed in the United States is homegrown. Most of the marijuana being smoked is smuggled in from Mexico and is either grown in Mexico or Colombia. In the United States, inventive growers have gone to more and more creative ways of producing their product from growing fields of the plant uh, in the wilderness back areas of national forests to growing plants in grow houses using grow lights and hydroponics. They had all of those uh, horrible uh, forest fires in, uh, in California and Oregon. Um, the marijuana growers are just um, beside themselves because it just swept right through their fields, burned them all up. So burned up all their profits. Uh, the typical marijuana plant contains over 420 chemicals. Uh, 30 of them have been found to be psychoactive. Uh, the most potent chemical is delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. When ingested, the uh, psychoactive uh, chemicals in the marijuana are converted by the liver into 60 other metabolites, some of which are psychoactive as well. Only about 20% uh, of the THC in the joint is retained by the body, but the longer the smoke is held in the lungs, the more it's THC that is absorbed and the stronger the high. Modern marijuana contains as much as 4 to 25% THC as compared to the 60s average of 1 to 3%. A lot of the old hippies are the ones that uh, who, who haven't smoked marijuana in 20 or 30 years are the ones that voted to legalize marijuana in select states, they have no clue because the marijuana that they smoked back in the 60s uh, is so much stronger than it used to be. Most of the research from the past, of course, is based on the weaker uh, marijuana plants. Much, of the researchers, much to researchers' surprise, marijuana has its own receptors in the brain, or at least that's what researchers thought uh, when they discovered new receptors in the brain when doing marijuana research in the 1990s. Hence the name endogenous cannabinoid neurotransmitters, uh, or CBs. The first endogenous neurotransmitter that was found to occupy the cannabinoid receptors was anandamide. Uh, CB1 receptors are found mostly in the brain, in the hippocampus, where your memory takes place, or in the amygdala, where emotion takes place, the basal ganglia, including the nucleus accumbens, uh, where organization takes place, and the cerebellum, where movement takes place. CB2 receptors are found mostly in the immune system and the lower body. Now, this is kind of a uh, serious situation because smoking marijuana can affect your immune system, it can affect your memory, uh, it can affect your emotions, and it can affect your organizational skills and movement. CB1 receptors are in areas that integrate uh, sensory experiences with emotions. It controls your learning. It controls your memory. It controls a sense of novelty. That's the nucleus accumbens. And it controls motor coordination. 
Opioids and cocaine overdoses are dangerous because they suppress the heart rate and respiratory functions of the brainstem. At the same time, it is almost impossible to overdose with marijuana because the anandamide receptors that it utilizes merely increase or decrease our minds to sensory inputs. Marijuana is a vasodilator and so causes bloodshot eyes when it is used. This uh, often leads to conjunctivitis. It also causes physical relaxation or sedation, some pain control, coughing from lung irritation, an increase in appetite, small to moderate loss of muscle coordination, increased heart rate, decreased blood pressure, decreased eye pressure, uh, decreased nausea, decreases in the ability to track movement, and creates an after image of a moving object. Uh, I was playing in a softball tournament in uh, Haver, Montana. Uh, it was a 24-hour uh, tournament, so it went on all night long. <laughs> it was nuts. Anyway, so you might have a game at, uh, it was also a 3-2 tournament, so you only got one pitch, and you had to decide to swing at it. If it was a ball, you walked, and if it was a strike, you struck out if you didn't hit it, hit the ball. So it was really kind of a strange tournament. It's also a co-ed tournament. So here we are. We uh, <clears throat> made it uh, uh, through the night. Uh, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. We're playing the, a team that is undefeated. Well, that team, unfortunately, uh, that team went out and got stoned. And so uh, we start playing the game. And they can't, they can't catch the ball. Uh, one girl gets hit in the, in the I'm sorry, one, one young, uh, young softball, female softball player gets hit in the face uh, because she didn't raise her glove high enough. Uh, it wasn't like it was a hard throw. Uh, she just didn't get it up in time. And it came over the tip of her glove and hit her right in the nose. Broke her nose. Okay, so things are getting really bad. I mean, we're getting base hit after base hit, and they're just laughing their, their, themselves to death. Uh, eventually, they had to call the game because they couldn't catch anything. They couldn't track anything. It was just too dangerous. And, of course, if you hit the ball too hard, you know, you might kill somebody. Anyway, that's what happened. <laughs> so we won the game. Uh, we came in fourth in the tournament. And they were actually were undefeated at that point. They were in the winner's bracket. Uh, and we were undefeated too, but uh, they were higher seeded than we were. And it knocked them out of the tournament. They smoked all that marijuana. It's the dumbest thing in the world to do if you're in a softball tournament at 3 o'clock in the morning. Marijuana causes a small temporary disruption of the male hormone testosterone. Well, this is of little importance to most males. Uh, for those with a hormone imbalance or those going through puberty, it can cause some problems. The testosterone decrease uh, can also cause a lowered sperm count and sperm motility uh, in uh, chronic pot users, making it less likely that they will be able to reproduce. It doesn't mean that they can't reproduce. It just means that they are more, less likely to reproduce. Marijuana makes people hungry, called the munchies, uh, when THC occupies the CB1 receptors in the hypothalamus that indicate satiation. Marijuana doesn't uh, sharpen an individual's sense of taste. It just makes you hungry uh, because you can't be satiated as far as that's concerned. Marijuana also gives the individual a feeling of confusion about wh where they are and eventually makes them feel deja vu along with being drowsy feeling aloof and having difficulty concentrating. With that, the advent of marijuana high in THC, these varieties have more extreme effects, makes you giddy, increases your alertness to the point of hypervigilance. It may, uh, it, there is a major distortion of time, major distortion of color, major distortion of sound. Sensation of movement under the user's feet, uh, visual illusions, hallucinations, paranoia, depersonalization. In that game, I hit the ball to left field. The left fielder moved in to catch the ball and it bounced behind him. He stood there and he kept looking at the ground and everybody kept saying, turn around, go get it. By the time some, the center fielder actually came over and got the ball, um, well, actually it was a short fielder, went back and got the ball. But by that time, I had already rounded the base. I hit a home run, and it shouldn't, he should have caught it. 
it didn't happen. Anyway, visual hallucinations, visual illusions, hallucinations, paranoia, and depersonalization. Marijuana users tend to act more empathic uh, to others' feelings when under the influence of the drug. Marijuana also makes the user more suggestible. Uh, the main organ in the brain that is affected by marijuana is the amygdala, which regulates your appetite. Pain uh, controls pain. Uh, it uh, it control, regulates your anxiety, your fear, suppression of painful memories, and your sense uh, of novelty. When an individual uses marijuana, the THC artificially stimulates the amygdala and makes even the most mundane objects and ideas interesting. If the individual overstimulates the CB1 receptors, these cells will downregulate, sometimes reducing these receptors by 70%. When the individual isn't stoned, this reduction of CB1 receptors will result in the loss of novelty. Even the most novel stimuli will be boring to them. For a marijuana smoker to continue working, studying, or even maintaining a relationship when not stoned takes a great deal of desire. Thus, the individual will be more likely to continue use to combat the perpetual boredom they experience when they aren't stoned. Receptor recovery can take uh, from two weeks to, uh, for moderate smokers up to six weeks or longer for heavy smokers. And this is one of the reasons why people don't, why they don't stop smoking marijuana, because they are bored out of their minds when they're not smoking pot. Short term, uh, they're bored. They not, nothing is interesting to them. Video games aren't interesting to them. Short-term memory is held uh, in the hippocampus for immediate, for immediate use. If this information is needed, it will be held until it can be transferred to the long-term memory. Anandamide receptors in the hippocampus dictate how much memory is available for immediate use. Because THC occupies anandamide receptor sites, it limits the amount of hippocampal short-term memory. The user may lose significant chunks of their lives while using because of the memory impairment caused by the THC. Marijuana slows learning and disrupts short-term memory, but doesn't affect long-term memory, though it does disrupt memory in general, attention span, and cognitive functioning. Oddly, users may feel that they are thinking deeper. They're not. <laughs> when the brain is developing, there is an explosion of the connections and synapses among the nerve cells in the frontal lobes around age 12. A great deal of pruning of these connections and synapses will take place through the next 10 to 12 years. Depending on the use, unused connections will be broken and, and discarded. Heavy marijuana usage during this time frame will change the brain structure. Because of distorting effects of marijuana, the individual may develop an impaired ability to determine danger, to organize, and to prioritize. Marijuana and MDMA use Use is especially destructive for memory, something that you need to remember. <laughs> Marijuana tends to give their user a distorted sense of time, and this is named, known as temporal uh, disintegration. While this effect may help with dull, repetitive jobs, for more complex jobs like studying, the individual may become easily bored and quit. Temporal disintegration is part of the most debilitating aspects of using marijuana, along with impaired judgment and short-term memory loss. Multiple and interactive tasks can be impossible for these individuals. Distortion of time, impaired judgment, and short-term memory loss will be evident in the individual's behavior for up to seven days after use. By 28 days, the individual has returned to what passes for normal with these select individuals. Research into the effects of smoking marijuana on the respiratory system indicates that smoking four or five joints is as destructive on the mucous membranes and the lungs as smoking a pack of cigarettes. This is because marijuana isn't regulated as to its growth and refinement and is rarely filtered. Chronic use of marijuana can lead to chronic coughing and bronchitis. The most damage is done to those individuals who smoke both marijuana and cigarettes. Marijuana smokers have increased mucus secreting epithelial cells but decrease cilia to expel the, the excess mucus. For those who smoke both cigarettes and joints, they lose all the cilia of their mucous membranes, meaning that they will have to cough to expel mucus. While, in, uh, while researchers have found that there is no link between marijuana and lung cancer, 
They have also discovered that marijuana suppresses the anti-tumor immune response, leading to a greater probability of developing tumors, including breast tumors. Marijuana has also been found to increase replication of HIV accelerating its progress. Because of its capacity to suppress the immune system, users tend to be more susceptible to colds, flu, and other viral infections. The immunocompromised are not ad advised to use marijuana. One of the problems with COVID-19, people that smoke marijuana, this is a pre-existing condition. They, have a, uh, they are immunocompromised. They have a suppressed immune system. And because of that, they are more susceptible to dying than uh, people that don't smoke or tope. Marijuana routinely increases, uh, and that's what they said about smoking cigarettes. People that smoke cigarettes, if they get COVID-19, they're more likely to have a negative reaction. In other words, they're more likely to have uh, lung problems. Marijuana routinely increases select mental problems, paranoia, anxiety, and depression. If a person is on the edge, uh, the confusion and depersonalization of THC will very often tip the scales in a negative direction. Individuals who maintain a paranoid mindset uh, while smoking marijuana might have exacerbated reactions with stronger blends or other drug mixtures. Tolerance to marijuana occurs very rapidly. Often new smokers will experience inverse tolerance where they actually become more sensitive to the marijuana and have heightened sensations with less smoking. Marijuana's effects last for from four to six hours but the substance may be detectable for up to 28 days and actually will stay in the body for up to three months. It is fat soluble and it stays in your fat. Because of the length of time it takes to rid the body of the substance, withdrawal from marijuana doesn't start until a longer period after abstinence. Research, is a, research has disclosed that despite the rumor to the contrary, marijuana smokers do go through withdrawals though they are more delayed than any other drugs, and like other drugs, not everyone will go through all the withdrawal symptoms. Everyone will have craving. Other symptoms include anger, irritability, anxiety, and or aggression, aches, pains, and chills, depression, inability to concentrate, slight tremors, sleep disturbances, decreased appetite and stomach pain, and sweating. All the, thing, all the, the positives that uh, marijuana has done for you or for some uh, select individual, uh, reverse it, and that is the withdrawal symptoms. Unlike most other drugs, marijuana has a stronger psychological addiction than physical addiction. Marijuana has just as strong chronic and compulsive use as any other drug. Unfortunately, marijuana's reputation is that it is non-addicting, uh, leading people into illegal usage and destructive circumstances with the idea that because it is less addictive, the behavior is all right. Adolescents are very sensitive to peer pressure. People who smoke marijuana tend to hang around other people who smoke marijuana. As a matter of fact, when I was telling you about uh, where 420 came from, why 420 has anything to do with marijuana, uh, the individuals that were looking for that field of marijuana were a group called the Waldos. And the reason they were called the Waldos was because they, they stood up against the select wall. They were uh, didn't have a lot of ambition, and so they would stand up against the wall, and they were known as the Waldos. <clears throat> because this crowd has a more rebellious nature than, say, the chess club, drug, drugs tended to be around for the cool people to try. In this way, tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana are gateway drugs to heavier drug use. People who develop a pattern of use at an early age restructure brain cells toward continued addictive use. Tolerance of less serious drugs may lead to a desire to uh, refine that high. Researchers have found that almost everyone in treatment programs have started with the big three. Marijuana use by 17 gives a 2.7 to 5.2 greater chance of heavier use. Marijuana is the most widely used illicit drug in the world and is the drug of choice in many countries. Australia, Canada, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Mexico, Panama, and South Africa. In the United States, penalties of, for possession and use vary from state to state. Uh, it is legal in, I think, 14 states now. In 2004, 44.2% of the arrests for drugs were for marijuana. 
and that's before any uh, it was legal in any states. Ninety percent of these arrests were for possession alone. Marijuana arrests almost doubled from 1980 to 2004. Other countries punished for marijuana, Austria, Belgium, Germany, Greece, Ireland, Italy, and Spain don't prosecute for small amounts for personal use. In England, possession of marijuana could lead to a five-year prison term, though most sentences are minimal. In the Netherlands, marijuana use is limited to the coffee shops. Sales outside the system are illegal. Normally, you don't get marijuana. If you go into these uh, coffee shops, uh, you'll get hashish, the resin from uh, from marijuana. Some countries have the death penalty for possession of hard drugs and marijuana, or hashish at least, is considered a, uh, a hard drug. Algeria, Indonesia, Iran, Malaysia, Singapore, Turkey, and Thailand don't get caught in those countries with any marijuana. Other countries punished for marijuana in Japan possession is illegal and people can go to jail for having less than an ounce of marijuana. Smugglers with larger amounts of marijuana will routinely be imprisoned for, for three to four years. Foreigners who are caught are deported after they serve out their sentence. These individuals will often be banned from re-entering re Japan for life. Paul McCartney has a lifetime ban from an incident in 1980. That was 40 years ago, and he hasn't been back to Japan and will never go back to Japan no matter who he is. In India, an individual can be imprisoned for up to 10 years for smoking marijuana. Venezuela has a minimum 10-year prison sentence. People caught for reckless driving or after having an accident are frequently not only tested for alcohol, but other drugs as well. In the case of marijuana, there are some circumstances that make this information erroneous. Marijuana stays in the system for weeks after it stops having a psychedelic effect on the individual. Elimination rates often vary by individual because of fat content. There is little uh, accurate data about how much marijuana in the system causes impairment. There is often another drug in the system at the same time, especially alcohol. While the research is fairly concrete, when dealing with alcohol and impairment, for marijuana it is not so simple. Statistics dealing with marijuana and traffic problems often involve polydrug use. 65% of heavy drinkers also use marijuana. People who drive under the influence of marijuana often are paranoid and drive too slowly for traffic. Research shows impaired driving for marijuana smokers up to 8 hours after smoking, and 60% failed 2.5 hours after smoking a moderate amount. A French study showed marijuana as a factor in 10% of the traffic accidents, a U.S. study showed a marijuana, marijuana as a factor in 4 to 14 percent of injury or fatal accidents. Once upon a time, I worked, uh, I worked in the laboratory. Uh, this is when I was in the military. And I, was, I, I lived in base housing. And base housing was about a mile away from the hospital. Uh, and I was on the very back end of the base housing. As a matter of fact, I, we had a cotton field out uh, behind our house. Uh, so one day I got called out. I got called out for an emergency. And so I threw the kids in, in the car and I headed out. And of course, in base housing, housing the, the uh, speed limit is 20 miles per hour. So I'm pulling out and I'm driving, trying to stay underneath this, under the speed limit. Uh, this is back in the 70s, so the cars weren't that fast back then. Uh, all of a sudden, the uh, x-ray tech got called. He got called out at the same time. So he pulls up out in front of me. He's like, I don't know, not very far in front, maybe 100 yards in front of me. And all of a sudden, he just almost stops, and he's going 10 miles an hour. He's going, and there's it's a one-lane road. And here we are. We're about a half a mile from, uh, from, the, the hospital, from the main gate so that we can go to the hospital. And he's just going so, I could have gotten out and walked faster than he was going, or run, at least run faster than he was going. Anyway, and he just wouldn't speed up, and I'm behind him, and let it, oh, geez, it took us forever. Finally goes through the main gate. Um, we get on to, uh, I, 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 somehow I got around him. I didn't pass him. I think it was a four-lane uh 
portion of the road. Anyway, I got around him and I parked and I ran inside, and ran down the emergency room and they're screaming, why are the hell have you been? You know, we called you 30 minutes ago. You know, you're supposed to be on call. And I said, well, I got behind somebody and they were driving really slow. I didn't say who it was. So I drew the blood. It was a, it was a diabetic. And I drew, drew the blood and ran down and started the, my test. Went to x-ray and I started, I, I was teasing this guy. He was, a, he was the quarterback on our football team. And I, was, I played tight end. or I played, uh, I played defensive end and, and uh, one of the, uh, uh, and a running back. And well, anyway, we, I, I played football with this guy. So I went in and I was teasing him and I said, What's, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Why were you driving so slow? Are you stoned? And I looked at him and his eyes were so bloodshot. This guy had been smoking pot and he had no idea how fast he was driving. Anyway, he thought I was going to turn him in because it's per fairly obvious. I mean, I, he did reek, uh, but I don't think anybody really smelled it. I mean, you're not, if you don't think about it, you don't smell what's going on. Anyway, uh, he thought I was going to turn him. Of course, it makes you paranoid. Smoke and pot makes you paranoid. So uh, uh, he, uh, he hired somebody to kill me. Um, as weird as that is, but everything turned out all right. I, obviously, everything turned out all right. He didn't kill me. Anyway, I'm still alive. Don't worry. <laughs> Most drug urine tests uh, place the cutoff for marijuana uh, use at 50 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, for long-term smokers of marijuana, this amount of drug uh, could be found in their system as long as three weeks after the last use. It would take a total of... Well, actually, what happened... The guy that was going to beat me up and kill me, uh, he found out that I, I was a single parent and I had two kids and uh, he was too soft-hearted to do anything about it. Anyway, I didn't die. <laughs> uh, it would take a, a total... Oh, whatever, whatever. For long-term smokers of marijuana, this amount of drug could be found in their system as long as three weeks after you, uh, last use. 50 nanograms per milliliter. It would take a total of six weeks for a heavy smoker to test completely negative if uh, that was the cutoff. The first time, a first time or infrequent user should be able to test negative 24 to 48 hours after use. My son does not smoke marijuana, but he used to work in a bar in uh, California. It was a club in California. And sometimes they smoke pot and it really pissed him off. Because he, he, he was, he, he was a teetotaler, he, and here he is working in a club. Anyway, so if you come in contact with this stuff, you get secondhand uh, smoke. Um, and from time to time, he would, he would try to get another job. And, of course, he was always real paranoid about whether uh, the amount of smoke that he uh, came in contact with at the club uh, was causing uh, was causing a problem. So anytime he found somebody smoking, you can't even smoke cigarettes in a club in California. But here these guys are trying to smoke pot, and he would uh, he would uh, stop them from smoking. Uh, one time, <laughs> this isn't that funny. Uh, one time this guy was rolling a blunt on his on his bar, and uh, Chris came up to him, big guys, you know, two hundred pounds. Chris is my size, you know, I'm not very big. I only weigh about you know, between 170 and, and 190. And of course he was about 180 at the time. This guy's like two, 250. Anyway, so he's uh, rolling a blunt on, on his, um, and on his barn and, and Chris told him to put it away and the guy just ignored him. So Chris grabbed it and he sprayed Windex on it. Evidently Windex, uh, destroys marijuana and then he threw it away and the guy, uh, threatened him, and uh, Chris said, oh yeah? And the guy <laughs> hauls off, and he swings at him, and my son ducks, and the other bartender was standing right behind him like an idiot, and he got hit right in the nose, broke his nose, started bleeding all over the place. And so the guy takes off, and my son tackled him, and held him down, and the way he held him down was he put his knee between his shoulder blades. Uh, so here, this one eight kid that's 180 pounds is holding this guy until the cops come up. I guess he was really lucky because he had friends at the, uh, uh, in the uh, club and they could have come in and really messed Chris up. But that, 
yeah. Uh, once again, they they uh, uh, put a hit out on Chris, but he survived. He obviously survived too. The Olympic Committee. Okay, what are we talking about? The Olympic Committee sets a cutoff of uh, negative at 50 nanograms per milliliter. Marijuana and its extracts have been used medicinally since the beginning of recorded history. It's used as a muscle relaxant, as an analgesic, as a painkiller, as an appetite stimulant uh, to control spasms and convulsions, uh, to calm anxiety, to treat asthma, to treat jaundice, to treat beriberi and ague, uh, to stimulate childbirth, to, to relieve coughs, to treat, treat uh, withdrawal from opiates and alcohol, and as an antibiotic. Modern medicine uses marijuana for its or its derivatives to treat glaucoma, nausea, and pain, to subdue uncontrolled movements uh, in cases of multiple sclerosis, to stimulate weight gain for wasting illnesses such as cancer and AIDS. It's also used in seizures. Uh, somebody has seizures. CBD oil or sometimes THC will take care of. It'll slow down the amount of seizures taking place. It slows down your brain, is what it does. Unfortunately, abuses of the system have led to limitations on acceptance of marijuana for medicinal purposes. Uh, marijuana and its derivatives contain THC and have been incorporated into select pharmaceuticals, especially the CBD oil. Uh, Dronabinol and Marinol and Sesamet are medications containing THC that can be given to individuals for nausea and pain control. Uh, Sativex is a spray that is used as an inhaler for people suffering from MS to aid with uh, movement coordination. Uh, these medications are merely maintenance drugs. Some patients have complained that the drugs uh, give them the feeling that they are getting better when they are actually staying the same or getting worse. If the patient has a history of addiction, the medications can lead to a relapse. The National Drug Control Policy Commission researched the use of marijuana as a medication and came up with the following conclusions. Uh, cannab uh, cannabinoids uh, have a natural role in pain modulation, control of movement, and memory. Uh, THC has potential therapeutic value for pain relief, control of nausea and vomiting, and has an appetite stimulant. Smoking marijuana is a crude method of delivery of THC and also delivers potentially harmful substances. The psychological effects of can, uh, cannabinoids uh, include anxiety, reduction, uh, sedation, and euphoria, and can be therapeutic. Marijuana smoking is a serious risk factor for the development of respiratory diseases. It uh, suppresses your immune system. And that is the end of the chapter. Okay, let me turn this thing off. Uh, okay, uh, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.